These are the websites you need to know about if you're gonna make money in the music industry. I'm Joe Cat. I'm a songwriter, a marketer, and a DJ. I've helped put together some of the biggest tours and worked with some of your favorite artists. Now I'm gonna jump right into it and assume you already have a distributor. Some website, a distributor, that's gonna put out your music in the stores, such as DistroKid. Now this is a pretty big favorite right now because the fees are pretty low and it's very user friendly in terms of splits for people that are collaborating, it makes it very easy. So if you don't know what a PRO is, it's a performance rights organization that collects your royalties for you. There's CSAC, there's BMI, and there's ASCAP. CSAC is invite only, BMI is free, and ASCAP charges a $35 fee for the publisher and a separate fee for the songwriter. Now, every six months they pay out royalties. And when you perform live anywhere, any venue, the ones that are paying the PROs pay a yearly fee to have whether the jukebox or to have live performances in their venue. So you can be getting a check every six months. You can get, be getting something. Something's better than nothing, right, for your performances that you're performing in these venues. So Nielsen SoundScan is an information and sales tracking system. Every time you release a song, you get an ISRC code that you can upload into SoundScan, and this is what they use for billboard charting, right? Uh, I believe it's 1,500 streams that equals one sale right now, but this is always changing as of lately because the digital era is making a lot of things a lot more, I don't want to say difficult, but they're still trying to come to a consensus on what things should be worth in the future and we're still fighting for songwriter rights and so on. So next thing is the Harry Fox Agency deals with mechanical royalties, copyright, uh, piracy. This is a little, a little sticky and a tricky situation because if you don't have a business organization, a business bank account, you won't be able to keep track of your finances and where you're getting paid once you start actually making money. So you don't want to mix it up with your personal bank account. That's why it's important. You should probably get everything taken care of, like your trademark, uh, working with the Secretary of State, so you can get all the business information that you need if you don't have it, so you can open up your bank account. Um, it's just all these things are going to be important later anyway when you're trying to get verified. Now, there's also a digital performance rights organization that collects on your streams, whether it's Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and that's called Sound Exchange. Uh, super important because most of us are making music on the internet now, so any kind of money that we would probably be making, if you're not performing especially, is going to come from Sound Exchange. These were the first checks I ever received from anything when my song started to go viral in Russia. Uh, this was in 2012, and I didn't even know until two years later. So had I known earlier, I could have been monetizing and collecting, and music streaming was picking up while actual record sales were slowing down at that time, so I missed out on a lot of potential. Uh, in terms of analytics, Google Ads is huge right now. You can be putting your music in front of channels that sound just like yours and growing your audience and subscribers exponentially, super quick. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with touring because a lot of artists just want to go on any tour and perform on any stage, but if the headliner doesn't even sound like you, you're wasting your time. And this audience is only receptive to the people that they went out to see perform. So at least make sure that your music sounds like the person that's headlining that show so you can get some fans and market your music correctly to the right audience. So. Next Big Sound is my favorite personal website for analytics because Spotify analytics are the only other way that you can see how people are doing in terms of what city that they're popping in, where their fans are coming from. And you get your Next Big Sound account by going through amp.pandora.com. Pandora account uh, sets up through your Next Big Sound account so you can see what stations are being added in what cities and you can use that information to go to those cities later in tour. You can find where your fans are at. And what's cool about Next Big Sound is that it's a big, big system of all the artists across the music industry and you can see if their fans are majority male or female or what their biggest songs are, uh, where it's coming from, all that stuff is super important because analytics will tell you 
all the information that you need about the artist, about their fans, about what cities. All this stuff can be used later to convert into just money overall. Making educated decisions. You don't want to be touring where people don't care about you. All that stuff is super important and a lot of people waste time on influencers, on things like that that aren't going to be as receptive as doing things by yourself and growing your audience by yourself. The only other thing I'll say is that TikTok works as a Chinese social media platform and it's not like the US uh, where our algorithms are different. So if you're very creative, you should be on TikTok because you don't have to spend money for your video to take off and to grow your audience very quickly. Um, that's about all I'm going to say right now, but if you haven't jumped on these things, this is probably the most prevalent websites that you need to know about and sign up with.